All right, good morning. Happy Friday to you. I'm Marlon Bowling, your tour guide to the Ag Commodities. And, well, it's already the end of a short trading week. I'm glad to be with you. And uh, we do have weekly export sales numbers that came out. Usually they come out on Thursday, but they didn't come out yesterday because Monday was a holiday. So here they are today. Let's take a look at what we had. Well, on the uh, corn export sales this past week, how about that? They're not a negative number <clears throat> by any stretch. Uh, last couple of weeks, we've been looking at negative numbers, and today we have 499,300 tons for a change. Well, how about that? Soybeans came in at 424,400 tons over this past week. I was a little bit surprised to see that one. And if you look closer into that, for new crop sales on soybeans, China actually bought 265,000 tons. How did they do that? I didn't know anything about that. Uh, interesting. So uh, anyway, they snuck that in there. We had the wheat, 256,000 tons. By the way, let me move back here up on the table on soy meal. Man, that's a big number. Second biggest total of all, 467,300 tons of soy meal. That's processed soybeans. Uh, that was uh, quite a large number. Uh, we had Brian Hoops on the line with us. He's with Midwest Market Solutions. He's out of Springfield, Missouri. And Brian, wow, I, I was a little bit surprised by those export sales numbers that came out. <laughs> well, um, yeah, I guess I was too. I'm not really paying a lot of attention to these export numbers because 95% <clears throat> of what we're trading right now is going to be weather related. So um, these export numbers are gonna be real quickly forgotten. The uh, wheat number, big cancellation, but really it's just rolled into the next marking year, our, our wheat old crop season ends next week. So not a, not a major move there whatsoever. Uh, we thought the corn and soybean sales would be pretty poor, and they are. Uh, the meal sales that you mentioned were very good, very outstanding, and they will continue to be because Argentina is largely out of the export market. So from an export standpoint, our corn, our soybeans are, are slow right now, and they will continue to be slow. In fact, we've heard reports this week of, of uh, importers uh, bringing uh, soybeans out of Brazil into the United States. So, um, you know, it's happened with wheat markets. The uh, European Union have sold wheat to the U.S., and now we're buying soybeans from Brazil, which really uh, seems counterproductive uh, given that we have supplies here that uh, U.S. companies can can buy from, uh, but it's just cheaper to import the product. Uh, anyway, we're looking at uh, weather. You know, it was reported that uh, 95 or 35 percent of the corn crop is in drought areas right now and that's one of the largest percentages ever so those areas badly need rain and there's areas that are not in that drought that are in dry dirt uh, that need rain so the forecast isn't real promising there's one forecast that's kind of added some rain and the market sold off on that but uh, overall the trend is for drier weather at least until june 15th and uh, that's going to be detrimental to corn and soybean yields if that materializes now, nonetheless, we had corn going lower overnight. That nearby July dropped seven and a half cents. Remember, we had the big update yesterday. But uh, the December, though, it did perform better than July. So that would seem to reflect what uh, Brian is talking about there. So December was lower, but not as much. It was down three at 527 this morning. On the Globex trade, we did have soybeans on July going just one tick higher, a quarter of a cent higher. Uh, didn't move much at all. We had November new crop up two and a half cents at 1171 and a half. In the wheat, well, we'll start in Chicago. These quotes provided by bar chart show July down three quarters at 610 even per bushel. In Kansas City, here you had July down three and three quarters at 798 and three quarters. Uh, here we go again, back and forth above and below that $8 benchmark. Now we're back below it again. Uh, just playing hide and seek here. Now on Minneapolis wheat, you had July down a quarter of a cent at 788 and three quarters. Just not doing much of anything in the wheat overnight. Cotton market a little lower, July down 32 points at 86.10, December down eight. All right, uh, we have beef and pork export sales numbers and we'll talk more with Brian Hoops about that when we come back. Okay, we are back talking with Brian Hoops and now we're gonna take a look at the beef and pork export sales last week. Well, let's see what we had. According to USDA, on the beef side, well, we had 18,100 tons. That was down just a little bit from last week, not a lot. Uh, on the pork side, you had total sales of 22,600 tons. That was actually down 23% from what we had a week ago. So that was a bit of a concern. 
Uh, let's go back to Brian Hoops here and talk about this. I see where China bought 3,400 tons of that beef, but they didn't buy any pork last week, Brian. Is that a good or a bad thing? How do you read that now? Yeah, you know, it's a negative for the pork market. Uh, our sales down noticeably from the last several weeks that uh, we've been talking about these numbers. The beef number is pretty much where, where it has been recently and, and really not much of a factor in the markets. But, you know, the, the hog market needs all the good news it, it can get. Uh, and we don't have that really in this export sales number. Uh, we slipped back yesterday. A lot of spreading, I think, of hogs and cattle as we had just a historic day yesterday. You know, back uh, 25 years ago, kind of when I started, a $10 range in cattle futures for the year was was about the normal. We had over a $5 range yesterday alone. Um, and, and I think this was the largest uh, cash uh, movement a basis to June futures in history. So we really, really jumped the cash markets yesterday, a 4 to $9 gain, uh, kind of depending on your location. Um, so how, how does it play out this morning? You know, maybe we see some follow through buying and uh, maybe there's some margin calls that need to be met. And so instead of meeting those, they, there's some buying on the opening. After that, I wouldn't be surprised to see a little profit taking coming into this market because most of the cash trades wrapped up for the week. And, you know, futures had such a historic rally yesterday. Yeah, it was almost like watching a slot machine in Vegas or something, the way that uh, that market took off really late yes. in the day. But uh, like you say, the cash market, just unbelievable gains. Uh, let's take a look at where we finished up yesterday for our point of reference today on the futures. So on live cattle, these quotes from Bar Chart confirm what Brian was talking about. We had June live cattle finishing up at 174.90. They were up $5.77. And August was up 470 at 172.37. Just tremendous gains late in the day. On the feeder cattle market, uh, they started out lower and they finished higher. You had the August up 247 at 241.65. Look at that range over $5 wide. Uh, September was up 272, and then on the lean hog trade, uh, we did have the June contract up 97, but all the others were lower. July down $1.27 at 8205. We see we'll see what happens here today after the export numbers. All right, thank you, Brian. Appreciate it. Have a good weekend out there, you Brian too. Hoops thank of you. Midwest Market Solutions, and we thank him for the opening comments here this morning.